Okay, so you've seen one way to lock these doors. Now let's take a look at another way, which is actually quite a bit easier. I just wanted to make sure you got to see how named variables work, and it is kind of a cool setup. But let's jump back into Kismet, and what I'm going to do is grab all of these compare bools, asking if the door is locked. We're just going to nuke those. We'll connect our untouched and our touch right back into where they were. I'm going to take my whole named variable section out. And then over here, I'm going to take lock the door and remove that as well. Now what I'm going to replace it with is just a regular toggle. In fact, the exact same kind of sequence object that we used over here to switch our light on and off. Just right click, go to new action, choose toggle, and bring in our toggle. Now you might have noticed this has an event input on it. Now the purpose of this input is to allow you to activate or deactivate any Kismet event that you like. So what I'm going to do is drag our event input all the way back over here to our trigger touch for the door. And then we'll just take link 5 and connect that to turn off. It really is that easy. Let's give it a quick test. So we right click, choose play from here. Now. Door is opening and closing. Everything's working great. We come over here, jump all the way through, and door suddenly does not work. So it's working just as well as our previous system did. And it's really only a single node. However, you might be thinking to yourself, wait, does this mean I have to go back to using wires? What if I like the wireless system? Don't worry, if I left it here, the video would have been really short anyway. So let me show you how you can take this and make it a wireless system. This requires that we use remote events, which are kind of like the event equivalent to named variables. I'm going to take our toggle and disconnect it from link 5, and I'm going to hold down control and drag it right over here and put it right above our event, like so. And let's give it an object comment. So be our door lock toggle. And let me put spaces in there to make it easier to read. I type a lot like that when I'm doing notes or, or coding something. And I'm going to slide everything over to give a little bit more room because here's the thing. We need some way to activate this turn off input. We need something to plug into this guy. We currently don't have anything. This is where remote events come into play. A remote event is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, just like a named variable. You can give the remote event a name, and then you can activate and deactivate that event by calling out its name. So let's start off just by setting up the remote event itself. I'm going to come over here to our door lock toggle, right-click, choose New Event, and we're just going to create a remote event. Now, by default, a remote event doesn't really do anything. It's not like a use trigger. It doesn't have any you know, particular... Uh, special outputs, all it has is one generic output. So really, it's just like a simple radio switch that is going to send out an electronic pulse when you send a signal its way. That's all it does. But there's some info we got to plug in. First off, we're going to come under its properties. We're going to scroll down. Its max trigger count is actually zero by default, which I find amazingly useful. We need to give this an event name, and we're going to call this lock door. So when lock door is called, notice as soon as we do that, we see that event lock door fires up, and we're going to plug that into door, to turn off, which will switch off our event. Problem here is that currently nothing is ever calling lock door. Nothing is making this event actually fire off and lock our door up. So I'm going to come back over here to our link 5 area, right-click, choose new action, and down from here you'll see an event submenu. Choose activate remote event. Now really, all this guy's doing is he's going to send a signal out to any like-named remote event, so we need to grab our event name property here inside the activate remote events properties, and we'll set this to all lowercase just for the fun of it, lock door. It finds the name, we get a little green checkbox. Now over here we still have a little red checkbox, let's go ahead and plug this into link 5. Also I'm going to close Kismet and reopen Kismet. And now we have a nice green checkbox here on our remote event as well. 
So Link 5 is causing our remote event to get activated. We now have a wireless connection, but we should test it out. So we'll jump here and run up, and let's see, door's working great. I love it. Now, let's come over here, and I'll just spam through these real fast. We'll try the door again, and now the door doesn't work. So everything is working exactly like it did back when we still had five different nodes all connected when we had wires reaching everywhere, except that now things are a lot cleaner. They're wireless, and I'll just kind of go through it a little more slowly real quick. I'm just going to walk up to it now, and nothing. So, boom. The exact same kind of behavior that we had before, where we can now selectively lock the door just with fewer nodes. Now, really, the first system we used with named variables wasn't necessarily bad. I just wanted to make sure that you guys got to see how that worked. It's just another, another way to go about it. Visual scripting is very much like scripting in the real world, and everybody's going to have a different style. So try to keep that in mind and keep all of your tools at hand. So go ahead and save your level at this point, and we will move on from here. Thanks a lot.